So the other day I get a message from one of my buddies, Christian, and he's a fellow Evo owner, so we talk here and there. Uh, and he sends me a picture of a red VR4. And I said, yeah, man, that's that's the one. That's the one that was involved in the wreck. He says, yeah, I just wanted to watch the video before I approached him. I said, what do you mean? Well, he's in town. He's in town. I'm thinking this is this is awesome, right? So uh, he's from up north. I'm from down south. The fact that he's in town is perfect, right? So I reach out. I reach out to Mike. Say, hey, man, let's get together. Let's. Uh, I want people to hear, to hear your side of the story. I want to know, you know, the process that was going through your, your mind at the time, compare notes, and we'll just let people, you know, hear from both of us and uh, kind of clear the air, maybe get a run in or two in Mexico, you know. Uh, and we were planning to, it didn't work out this time. It didn't work out. He had things to do, it, it, or in Florida, it rained. Um, and it just didn't happen. Uh, that was the plan for the next video. But that didn't work out, so what we're going to do now is we're going to do a whole run through the car. I've had people ask me what's the details on the car, so... We're gonna go through it. We're gonna go through what makes Cleaver Beater such a competition eater. So, uh, saddle up, let's go. So we're out here at the local skid pad. Uh, all the drift cars come out here to have their fun. I figure might be quiet enough to actually get some uh, talking done without traffic noises and all that. Quick history on the car. I bought it from a buddy of mine. Um, I had asked him for years when he was ready to sell it, give me first dibs, and he really he did. Thanks, David. Um, a couple years back, he had built the car to autocross. It had been to Sebring. It had been to Daytona. Um, it's been to Tell of the Dragon a few times. Uh, he had built the car to, to be uh, basically a race car, really. Uh, it was gutted you know i bought it with two seats and a dashboard um it had, it had a big splitter apr splitter on the front had a big apr gtc 300 wing on it uh i kind of wish i still had that stuff but i took it off because i wanted it to be a street car put all the interior back in it wanted it just to be an ultimate just a fun weekend car that you could uh surprise a couple cars in every now and then but bought it from him with a blown up motor uh took me about a year and a half to get it back on the road and uh, just been having fun with it ever since. Uh, so, first and foremost, 4G63, the engine, the, the heart, the heart of this unit. Are you ready to be underwhelmed? Because when you pop the hood, it's just as plain as can be. Uh, no big turbo. This thing is a built 2.0 from MAP, Wiseco Pistons, Eagle Rods. Uh, it's got a Kurt Brown Stage 3 uh, race spec head. Uh, the turbo, it's got a blouse dominator. Stock frame, small turbo, thing is made to spool as quick as you could possibly want it to. Car was built to go from point A to point B quickly. Spool's about 35 PSI, spike's about 35, it'll run off a bit. Uh, but there's just there's really nothing fancy. My very first race in the car after getting it put back together was a, uh, a 5 10 speed. I heard great things about him, I wanted to see what the car could do. So, uh, Approached him, hey man, let's let's get a run in. First thing he says is pop the hood. Okay, I pop the hood, he looks at it, right? He says, what does it make, about 400 horsepower? I said, I really didn't know, I hadn't had it on a dyno. But uh, he, he lost. At that point, I knew that popping the hood on this thing was always gonna be a bit deceptive. Made it to the built 2.0. We've got a Shep Trans Ultimate Ratio uh, 456 final drive transmission. Uh, you know, it rips. It's got a TRE built transfer case. It's got a TRE built rear end. Um, all the stiff mounts that you could want throughout the thing. Of course, you got all the, you know, the basic bolt-ons, the radiator, front mount, uh, intercooler pipe kit, you know, everything that you'd want to get to this point before building a motor has been done. Uh, it's 290.85. The thing makes 550 horsepower. 535 foot pounds of torque now everybody's thinking you need this big 800 horsepower evo to run a circle track you don't you need torque you need to be able to hit a corner come out super strong and the launch is key and that's where that quick spool hard torque get out of the hole really comes in handy because 
small displacement engine, big turbo, it's gonna bog and you're not gonna have the all-wheel drive advantage that you really have in this car. So big turbo is not the key, guys. Everybody keeps asking. No, stock frame turbo with an engine that's built to breathe. Every, every pound of boost you throw at it, it's just gonna breathe it. So next we'll kind of just go over the, the chassis suspension. Like I said before, it's got solid motor mounts, solid diff mounts, uh, all the solid, well, I'm sorry, polyurethane mounted uh, essentials that you could want. In my last video, I kind of went through that I made a couple good upgrades here lately that really just finished that that uh, idea off. But as far as uh, chassis, so we're talking brakes. Brakes, we've got, you know, slotted rotors. We've got two-piece rotors up front that are a hair bigger than stock, but we still got the stock Brembo's. Uh, it stops well enough. Uh, never really had any issues with it stopping unless you're stopping consistently on and off, on and off in a track situation for 10 minutes is when you start to feel brake fade. Brakes seem to be working for me. Now, the coilovers, we've got Olin's, a custom valved set of Olin's. Things are not cheap and it's really, you can't skip on that when you're trying to take it around the track. Wheels and tires. So here's where it gets interesting. I, I run the, uh, the Inky wheels. It's what I bought the car with. I think they look great. Where I seem to fall a little short the tires. And the reason for that is I wanted a tire that I could drive to the grocery store in the rain, feel comfortable on, and, and maybe still give it some, some good spirit of driving. So the Falcons, uh, they're an old tire. You know, it's an old cell tire. It's an old autocross tire, uh, 200, 200 treadwear compound, stiff sidewall, gives you that good lateral support, but still does allow you to drive during the rain and not fear it too much. So typically I run that all four corners, 18 by nine and a half, 265, 35, 18, 10 millimeter spacers. Uh, first and second event, I tried that setup all the way around. Didn't exactly work for me. So it's a little different up front. So. I went budget build. I went and bought one wheel with the right offset to not have to run a spacer. I bought one Toyo R888, 100 treadwear, okay, softer tire. Still got the uh, stiff sidewall, and it's actually a little wider contact patch. Doesn't have quite as much stretch as the same size tire Falcon does, a little thicker patch. So we've got 100 treadwear that corner. We've got 300 or 200 treadwear in the other three corners. Now. One of the questions you're probably gonna to wanna to ask is it's all wheel drive, won't that throw off the system? This thing has a, uh, a tuned transfer case. It's actually got a 65-35 split. Um, so yeah, you would think maybe it's gonna throw it off, but kind of what I did and the thought process behind it was I also had two degrees of camber, you know, front, driver's side, and then both back, two degrees of camber. So what I did to kind of offset what you might think is a traction uh, uh, abnormality was I threw, and this works for, for more than one thing, through three and a half degrees of camber on that front right plant tire when you're coming into the corner. So it's got less of a contact patch than the other three, um, but a stickier tire. So I'm thinking it's, it's gonna all work out. It's gonna, it's gonna have the same amount of spin on a straight line, but when you're cornering, it's gonna give you that extra grip. And I really feel like that's exactly what it did. I played with pressures throughout the night. Uh, I think I nailed it. I think it was perfect. So alignments, I've actually gotten to the point where I can do my own alignment in the garage, um, but you have to have a basis. There's an easy way to do it. And I'll show pictures here. Basically, you, you, you get a straight edge, you get blocks, you get bungee straps, and you kind of just create your straight line. But you really have to have a, uh, a baseline from a from an alignment shop that that shows you what degree of camber adds up to what dimension on say a tape measure so you you could wing it if you're just going straight straight up straight down straight forward no toe none of that i wouldn't suggest it. i'd say go to the alignment shop give them your custom spec and start tweaking from there using your measurements so as i said i went with a custom custom alignment i had two degrees of uh, camber on the three corners three and a half degrees on the one stick tire that actually dives down in the corner. And I mean, that thing buries into a fender when you're really good in there, the, the G's into the bank, which really surprised me. Coming from the flat track to an embankment, I didn't know what to expect. Um, and actually my first trip out there, 
uh, it was nerve wracking. It was second, third trip. You pretty much know what your car is capable of. You just got to figure out what you're capable of and how far you want to push it. So the interior, uh, you know, I tried to fit the rules. Have to have all interior components and uh, carpets, seats. Interior of this thing's pretty stock. You know, of course, it's got a short shifter, weighted knob, uh, a nice racing steering wheel. Uh, but the factory Recaros do a great job. I might upgrade the driver's side to like a Recaro, uh, uh, what is it, a pole, uh, pole position or whatever. I believe that was. Um, One thing I forgot to mention that I thought was worth editing is this thing's got the, the inch and a half lowering brackets for the seats. So both sides, left to right, really gives you the lower center of gravity for cornering um, and just kind of makes you feel more inside the cockpit as opposed to up above the dash. Much better feel, worth doing. But, you know, I, I took all the speakers out, took the radio out. Uh, I had to start cutting weight to try to keep up with Cletus. Which also involved, uh, you know, billet mounts where there were normally cast mounts. Uh, it also involved titanium exhaust instead of stainless exhaust. It's noisy as can be, but it gets the job done. Uh, no bumper on there right now, of course. Usually there's a JDM bumper on there. Took it off, I didn't want the thing to get beat up. Uh, and thankfully that 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 was a good decision overall i think the car looks great i think the car sounds great i think it performs extremely well for uh for the amount of money that's in it compared to what some of the things are out there now some of those guys are just out there with expensive cars enjoying the chance to run it on a track and i, and I can't i can't hate them for that it's it's a fantastic time but for the money point this car really just holds its own as you guys have seen on the track so like I said, guys, 550 horsepower, 535 foot-pounds of torque. Um, it'll run eighth mile in the high sixes uh, on the right tires. Uh, it'll run quarter mile. I actually haven't done it myself. Probably low tens, uh, low to mid tens, I would say. It would be a fair estimate. This car is not going to blow past you on the interstate. It's not going to do that. It's not built to do that. It'll sure drag you up the... Uh, drag you up the on-ramp, though. And that's really what it's built for is that quick-hitting power uh, shift to shift. Uh, but, you know, it runs out of steam up top. It's still a 2.0. It's still a small turbo. But you don't need the big turbo, guys. Uh, you need quick power. You need torque. And you need traction. So, hopefully everything I've showed you helps you decide, I don't know, get into it. Get into the sport. Get into the hobby. Once I got involved with the uh, Freedom Factory races and Spectator Drags, man, it's a blast. I've got some other mods in mind. And I'm really going to come after Cletus hard this time now that I know they're letting Hoosiers on the track. Guys, I hope you enjoyed it. I know I'm kind of just spitting off uh, random stuff here, but if there's any questions, go ahead and enter them down below. Like, subscribe, tell me what you think. Tell me what you think I should have changed. I'd love to hear it. Just drop them below. Thanks, guys. Much love. We'll see you later.